we can finally get rid of our $100 a month porta potty in favor of a $20,000 sand mound. So let's get started. What we just got dropped off behind me is our first of probably six truckloads of DEP sand. This is what forms the bed of our sand mound septic system. Because of all the rock where we're at, we unfortunately could not do a traditional septic system, which is roughly half the cost. There's a lot of material that's got to be imported by dump truck in a sand mound system, and that's what makes it so expensive. Today, we're going to go over how our system's installed and watch it happen. There there is where the septic system will exit the building. That's a three inch PVC pipe. I have a three to four inch coupler on it now. The four inch pipe will basically come down here, make a 90 degree turn and go right on down that hill, right, right through that clearing. Our sand mound is gonna be down in the woods. At about the halfway point on the way down here is where our actual septic tank is gonna be. It's a 1500 gallon two compartment concrete reinforced tank. I actually don't think we're gonna get it right here. Uh, we have to be able to get the truck backed up to it. So it might come back a little bit further here. It's like a 15,000 pound tank. So you gotta make sure you have access with the truck. Uh, otherwise there's no small excavator or even really mid-sized excavator that can set these things. They're super heavy. So it'll probably be actually somewhere like right about here instead. We have a couple videos on finding the septic site and doing the perk test. Check those out if you haven't seen them. It was a difficult road even just to get to this point where we could do our system design. So all the way down here in the woods, about 220 feet, is where our dosing tank and our mound is gonna go. The dosing tank is a separate 500 gallon tank that basically contains just the effluent, which is the liquid portion of the septic system. And then it's actually got a pump that pumps it uphill into the sand mound. So where all these weeds are right here is where the actual mound's gonna be. It's a 15 by 60 foot hill, basically made out of sand, gravel, and dirt. These little pink flags are where I've staked out where I think the dosing tank is gonna go. And the reason it's got a pipe uphill to the mound is so that when the pump stops running, all the effluent in those pipes flows back into the tank and it doesn't freeze in the pipes. The most important thing for installing these sand mound systems is really this bed preparation. Basically, the ground just gets a very light chisel plow just to rough up the ground enough so it kind of mixes with the sand when it gets laid down. The key is not to disturb all the topsoil and organic matter. That is critical for actually processing the septic as it filters down through the bed. So the proper chisel plow parallel to the contour so that we're not creating drainage ditches down the hill. That is a critical, critical step. And it's actually the first thing that gets inspected before we put anything down, the chisel plow has got to be inspected. So we do have the inspector lined up this afternoon to come out and take a look. I thought about DIYing this system with our friend's barred excavator, but overall, this is such an expensive investment. I didn't, really didn't want to mess it up. I'm typically very willing to tackle DIY projects and I think I probably could have handled this, but. A big thing was the time. I'm straight out of vacation at work and I'm even flexing my schedule quite a bit to be here today on a Wednesday for the start of the system just so I make sure everything is laid out where I want it. But all that said, I decided to hire the guy who did my mom's septic system about five years ago. I kind of got to know him a little bit then. I've seen the work he does. And so I trust that he's gonna do a good job with it. He did allow me to save some costs by procuring my own materials, all the pipe, the wire, uh, the tanks themselves. I actually have called ahead and ordered all that stuff and that allows me to save his markup on procuring that materials himself. All right, Jason from Blue Star has dropped his skid steer off. He's down here clearing out. He's just taking the bucket and clearing some of that vegetation out. An alternative to using an actual chisel plow for this is just lightly roughing up the top layer of soil with excavator bucket teeth, so that is what Jason's doing. He actually had a skid steer attachment with chisel plows on it, but the ground was way too rocky to use that effectively. So Jason came and left this morning. He's probably only here for an hour to chisel plow this, and the inspector showed up around 11. Said everything is good to go, it looks good. We have some pretty rocky soil, so it's gonna be very well draining for a sand mound. Jason estimated that the system will probably never clog up or go bad just because of how rocky and coarse our soil is. So that's a good thing because this is an expensive system and I will be happy if we never have to do it again. I was gonna start carting some of the sand down from behind the house over here onto the bed, 
but the inspector recommended we let it just sit and dry out for a bit. You want the bed as dry as possible when you mix it with the dry sand, which is really dry crust rocks. Here's the DEP sand up close. It's not quite sand. It's basically like really small rocks mixed with sand and screenings. In comparison, here's some leftover screenings. It's much softer. There are some small rocks in here, but it is basically like powder whereas the sand is a little bit more gritty. So we won't start actually moving sand till tomorrow. Got four more triaxle loads coming. So I think it'll definitely be handy if I'm on my skid steer while Jason's on his and we can kind of double team it. Also got to get the holes for the tanks dug tomorrow because the tanks show up Friday morning early. Tomorrow's Thursday, so we really just have tomorrow to do it, but the weather is fantastic. It is like 60 degrees out and it is, what's the date today? It's November 2nd, so this is definitely an unseasonably warm fall, but I am not upset about it. Today, I also ran and grabbed our geotextile fabric and our straw for the mound. The fabric's job is to separate the gravel from the berm soil that goes on top of it so that those don't mix together and the gravel ends up getting clogged up. And then, of course, the top gets all seeded and strawed, so that's what the straw is for. The job of a sand mound, or any septic system really, is to filter the liquid waste that comes out of your toilet, just the liquid. The solids get trapped in the septic tank and the liquid ends up going to the filtration bed, which is what the sand mound is. Because our soil is so rocky, we didn't have the appropriate depth of soil that we needed, which was 60 inches, we only had about 32 inches. So to make up the rest of that, we have to build upwards with sand that can properly filter the effluent or the liquid that comes out of the system. Then on top of that sand, we will have to have a layer of gravel, which the Dosing pipes are embedded in, that's where all the liquid gets squirted into by the pump. On top of that gravel, we then build a berm all the way around it to encapsulate the gravel and the sand and make sure that none of that fluid can leak out of the outsides of the bed. It has, all has to go straight down. Now what makes these systems so expensive, probably about twice the cost of your ordinary septic system, is the trucking. We have to import tons of material, literally tons. I think in sand alone, we're gonna have six truckloads at 20 tons a piece, so 120 tons of sand. Uh, probably 50, 60 tons of stone, and then 10 trucks of dirt, which, yeah, you're looking at 200 tons of dirt that's gotta be brought in to build that berm up. So that is a huge expense right there. Of course, you have a whole separate tank, which is your dosing tank. It contains an expensive pump, and then all the extra pipe and wire and conduit to run that pump and make sure the effluent gets pumped up into the bed. It's just a more labor-intensive system and more materials required, and thus, cost more money. But it's what we had to do to have a house up here, so you gotta do what you gotta do. Let's talk a little bit about the pipe that we're using. This is all Schedule 40 PVC. I opted to get solid core wall. There's foam core as well, which is a little bit cheaper, but we only wanna do this once, so I got the solid core stuff. Um, this is all Schedule 40 gray conduit, three quarter inch. This is for the wire that comes all the way from our main breaker panel in the house all the way down to that pump 220 feet away to power it. There's also no alarm wire that goes in this and allows us to have a signal if that, if that tank down there ever starts to get too high. For some reason, if the pump fails or anything like that, there's a float and an alarm in there. And if that float gets too high, we get a signal that something's wrong. This beautiful stack of pipe here uh, cost about $2,000 which is pretty outrageous, honestly. Um, these sticks of four inch pipe used to be, I don't know, maybe 15, $10. Now they're like 50, 50. They're up over three times uh, over the past couple years, thanks to series of events, mostly related to COVID, I guess. But it's pretty ridiculous how expensive PVC has gotten these days. And, uh, and unfortunately, it's one of the most expensive parts of building right now is buying PVC pipe. But I was able to work out a decent deal uh, at Home Depot since I bought a bunch in bulk. I was able to make the solid core pipe cheaper than the foam core if I were to get that to, through a distributor. So that helps a little bit, but it still hurts. It is just unseasonably warm for this time of year. Last year, fall of 21, it was like summer to winter in about three days. All the, all the leaves fell off the trees pretty much ASAP and it was cold all of a sudden. Now it's like, sort of like summer is still going and it feels fantastic. I wish every year would be like this in Pennsylvania. I'm pretty glad that I've brought on Jason, our septic guy on board, because it definitely helps to have experience in something like this. And I do realize that I can't know it all, despite trying. Shout out to my buddy Travis for 
letting me scrounge some of this uh, geotextile fabric. Travis does a lot of excavation work in this area and had this sort of left over from one of the residential jobs that they do putting in stormwater pits. I'm pretty lucky I was able to actually get a variance on my stormwater pit. Stormwater pit being the giant hole in the ground full of gravel that your gutters are supposed to drain into as so as not to cause some environmental disturbance. While they amount to be a really big expensive kind of silly hole in the ground filled with rock and I really wanted to not do that if we could help it. So luckily after emailing with the local code agency uh, they were able to give me an exception to it because of how rural we are and the fact that there is a fully wooded area where we're going to be discharging all our gutter outlets and uh, thankfully we don't have to put the seepage pit in. So that only saved us five grand or something like that, probably more than that. A guy on Instagram that we're friends with, Busy Dad's Workshop, he said he put like a $29,000 seepage pit system in uh, because the township required him to, which to me is just, I don't know how that can be acceptable at all. That's, that's horrible. Granted, more populated area, but still that's, that's absurd. One last bale. Done a lot of lifting on this project. Lots of lifting involved in building a house. It's all right though, I was able to cancel my gym membership. Save me a little bit of money. Ow, ow. Started day two, let's start moving some sand. Got our third load here and it's getting dry enough that we might be able to get the trucks all the way down there. This went so much faster with two skid steers running instead of just one. Once we had a decent pile, Jason took the excavator and started leveling off the top of the pile while I continued to dump around the edges. We needed a minimum of 16 inches of sand everywhere across the 15 by 60 foot bed. And of course, because we're going downhill, it's much thicker at the bottom edge. As we worked our way downhill, Jason came back and turned up the ground anywhere my wheels had been. That way there's no discontinuity when we put the berm soil on to seal up the mound. Then it was on to digging the hole for the main tank. I was shocked at how this John Deere Mini handled a three foot wide bucket, especially in this rocky soil, but it got it done. You can't even make it flat, it's so bad. Can't make it flat? You can't make it level. Because of the rocks? Yeah, you so, gotta go deeper than what you really need to go to get it. And then we'll add stone, is that what you wanna do? We can add screenings or stone. We'll probably add screenings, it's cheaper. Yeah. We'll just level it out with screenings. Gotcha. Ain't a whole lot else you can do. Yeah, there's just a lot of rock. Right. Wow. If I can get this corner chiseled out a little bit more, we'll be ready for the tank. We'll dig out other one tomorrow morning. He said he'd be here about 7.30. Oh my goodness. Well, it doesn't really get light out till like seven. I got a spotlight, a battery powered spotlight. We might need it. That's what we'll be doing. 6 a.m. on day two. All right, I got the uh, laser set. It's basically a little higher than over there where my rake is. Okay. All right, so the rest of it, I want to fill it out with sand, but I want to see if I can get this corner out some more. Gotcha. And then I want to see if I can get that corner out some more. Do you want me to start bringing anything over at this if point? I want to start bringing some sand down and throw it in the middle there. Okay. Then you have to get down in there and rake it out once we get it Sure. Good. The screenings, right? Yeah, I just use screenings. Okay. Use anything good. Sounds good. Well, this is what Jason's been up to. He is digging the second tank hole for our dosing tank. It's gotta be a little bit smaller, only about a six by six, so that helps. And the tank truck should arrive any minute, so hopefully we're ready. Definitely pulling up some big rocks. 
Luckily he's got the thumb and that does make digging in the rocks a little bit easier to pick the big ones up. This guy right here is a little bit too big to get out, so I think he's opening the hole up the other way. And just in the nick of time, we were done with the second hole because it was time to set tanks. The truck showed up. Our main septic tank is a 1,500 gallon, two compartment tank. It's all made of precast concrete and weighs like 15,000 pounds. Of course, these trucks are designed for it, so it handled it without a sweat. Jason purposely angled the tank in the hole to face more towards the house, just so there's less severe of a pipe bend coming into the tank. That can in turn lead to clogs eventually, so the smoother the pipe run, the better. This means the pipe coming out the other end of the dosing tank will have a bit of a bend in it, but because that's just liquid, clogging is not an issue here, so it can have all the bends it needs. Time for tank number two. Let's do it. First one was easy. The second tank is 500 gallon capacity and its sole purpose is just to hold and meter the liquid that gets pumped into the mound. Here you can see the blue pump which sits on a small pedestal in the dosing tank. The gray float triggers the pump to turn on when the water level rises and the yellow float signals the alarm. The two foot concrete riser is placed on the tank and sealed with this gray sticky stuff called mastic. Then it was time to start piling up the berm dirt around the edge of all the sand. This berm is what keeps the liquid inside the sand mound. Using a track skid steer is especially important for this step. The track spread out the ground pressure of the machine which prevents compaction of the berm. We had to import 16 loads of soil for this project at $200 a load. This was just enough to cover the septic system. I still need more to cover the rest of all the rocky ground in order to grow some grass at this place. But you can do the math on that. The bottom line is dirt ain't cheap. I called around to a few other local build sites, but unfortunately wasn't able to find anything for any cheaper. Jason left me the keys to the skid steer this weekend and my main first job is building the back of this berm back up. So. This is quite a, uh, quite a bit of dirt. We got 10 truckloads of dirt in, and I'm supposed to make this about a three to one slope. Shallower than that probably wouldn't hurt either in order to get a lawnmower on this in the future. Let's move some dirt. <laughs> Out of daylight last night I was able to get a few of these loads moved but I still have about three and a half truck loads worth that are blocking my path all the way up to the house where the stone is the next step is putting that number 57 stone on the top of the bed we need 10 inches of it that is what the pipes will be embedded in and allows the the effluent to have a place to go when it comes out of the pressurized pipes but before I can spread it I'm gonna need to move this dirt somewhere some of it's gonna be backfill for the septic tank here and the rest of it, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. So that's a little inconvenient, but hopefully it doesn't slow me up too much today. I'm also filling up our dosing tank with water. I ran a hose all the way back to the utility room of the house where we have a hose bib. And after running it, basically trickling for a few hours yesterday, I got probably 200 gallons in there. I think I need about 100 more. That's enough water to trigger the pump to kick on when we put power to it because we need to test this in front of the inspector to demonstrate that there's enough head pressure coming out of the pipes before we cover it all in stone and they will never be seen again. This hose is probably 200 foot long and was literally long enough by like six inches with this little handle on it. Not sure if this mattered, but I wanted to blow all the leaves off of the sand before I put any stone on it 
Just didn't want anything extra that would clog up the bed. It took a while, but I was finally able to carve out a path to get between these piles of dirt and the septic tank. I put a good bit of the dirt as backfill to that tank, and then I brought some of it down here around the berm. So let's start moving some stone. I don't think I'm gonna have quite enough here. This is just left over from the foundation, about a truckload and a half. We're probably gonna need one more load come Monday. Another reason I can cancel my gym membership, running back for the camera. Well, today's the first day of daylight savings time and I did not know that. And so it's five o'clock and it's completely pitch black outside. So I've transitioned inside, found a task that I can do for this that does not require daylight and that is pulling the wire into our main panel. There's actually two wires that goes all the way down to that dosing tank 250 feet away. That's our power cable to feed the pump and then a little alarm wire that hooks up to a box in here and tells us if the tank is too full. I knew we need to get these wires in here when I put the foundation in so I put this little conduit in right next to our septic pipe and that is perfect for accepting our alarm wire and our 12-2 UF. And here's where that comes out inside. So all I need to do is route the wires all the way up across the ceiling and down to our panel. I'm gonna follow the same route as our well wire there. Then it comes down to the main panel. This is the alarm box that that small wire goes into. This has its own plug too. I'll just put an outlet right next to it for that. So I'm just pulling in a little at a time until I get to the panel. I'll terminate everything and then I'll pull all the slack back out and fasten it down. The fact that we have to run wires to our septic system is pretty annoying. A traditional septic does not need this at all. It's completely gravity fed, but we gotta do what we gotta do. Fast forward to the next morning. Unfortunately, I had to work all day yesterday, so I wasn't able to be here to help, but Jason and Brian were here working and they got some work done. Let's check it out. Well, it's safe to say the guys were busy setting some pipe and it's looking pretty good. I started them off with that three inch clean out and then there's a three to four inch transition there. From there we go and start to make the curve. This clean out here and this stub of pipe is for our future house connection. So we decided to put that in now. So it'd be really easy to hook in a pipe to that later. And it also serves as a clean out just in case anything gets clogged up. One of the requirements for install is that the pipe is fully bedded. So we used some leftover screenings that we had from the well pipe and this will work perfectly for keeping this pipe nice and secure in the ground so that it doesn't bow or flex or anything like that. Here's a little bridge Jason backfilled to be able to get the skid steer over. And then we go all the way to the tank. There's another clean out just like the first one and that is for a potential future shop build. I'm sort of visualizing this area back here as a decent spot for a shop at some point. And I thought if I wanted to have a toilet in that shop, it would make sense to have a connection for the septic system. So I asked Jason to put this clean out in here. Again, just like the first one with that stub off the end and a fern coat cap on the end of it. And then a stub upwards off that sanitary tee to act as an actual clean out. Notice that he did not glue that cap or coupler on. That's because we don't quite know where final grade is yet. So by not gluing this, we can cut this to length when final grade is established and we don't waste any fittings or glued pipe in the process. Continuing from the outlet of the septic tank, we got more four inch pipe that runs down and all the way to the dosing tank. This is just effluent or basically liquid poop water, no solids or very small solids anyway. So you don't have to be quite as critical of having straight runs. There's no real risk of clogging this pipe up. It's tough to see, but there's actually a rubber gasket built into these tanks to seal any extra water from getting in around this pipe. It's nice that you don't need to have a perfect angle on the entrance to the pipe too. That definitely helps. And here the guys built up the laterals. These are the final pipes of the system that essentially squirt the poop water at a metered rate into the bed. They are sitting on 10 inches of gravel, so that gives the liquid an immediate place to go, and then it filters down into the sand. In our case, this is a 60 foot by 15 foot long bed. We have four laterals, they're 30 foot a piece, and there's a quarter inch holes drilled in the bottom at about six foot spacing. These are inch and a half diameter pipes, and they have these clean outs, which at the end of the day will get buried, but he's gonna put a piece of metal at the location of each one of these so we can easily find it and dig it up if needed. By burying them, we just make sure they don't get damaged by a lawnmower or something in the future. Today's goal is to get all the electric done. So we have some 12-2 UF Romex and some 18-2 alarm wire. I've already pulled it through my sleeve in the foundation into the utility room. And now we just have to put it all in conduit, three quarter inch conduit, 
all the way down to that dosing tank, 230 foot away. Unfortunately, I have to go to work again today, so I won't be able to stick around and help, but I'm gonna do what I can as far as wiring on the inside of the house in the next 30 minutes here before I leave, and the guys should pretty easily be able to wrap things up on the electric side today. Jason's feeding the fish tape through now and got all the 250 foot of wire pulled out. Hair's all over the place. Fast forward another couple days because we've been at work this week and we have a pumping, working septic system. Let's check it out. All of the piping is officially in the ground and that includes this three quarter inch conduit. And there it goes out over the tank and down to the mound, way down there. You can even see Elena standing down there. 200 plus feet away right now. It's incredibly mushy and gross out here right now with about oh, probably an inch and a half of rain is what we got yesterday. Probably gonna dig this conduit down a little bit where it crosses the tank here. That dirt was there and Jason just kind of laid it over top, but I think I'll try to get it down a little bit closer. There's the rest of it. From the tank, here's how it comes all the way down to the dosing tank. Makes a nice wide sweep in and Jason just drilled a hole through that, that riser there, stuck the pipe right in and we're good to go. Here's where the conduit and the wire come in. You'll notice this little junction box here made out of a couple water bottles filled with silicone. Jason actually told me about this, that he's tried a lot of different solutions for connecting these wires, these wire splices, and it turns out that the water bottle filled with silicone is really the, uh, the, the way to go inside these pump tanks. He's done regular junction boxes, whatever. They're just not waterproof at the end of the day, but apparently that option is, so I said, why not? Let's just go with it. Unfortunately, I couldn't be here for the squirt test, but basically what happened was a three foot long pipe was screwed onto the end of one of these outlets here. The pump was activated and the test is just to see that water comes out of that three foot tall pipe, basically saying there's three foot of head pressure at the end of the lateral here. Fortunately, we passed with flying colors and we are approved to cover this mound and backfill everything. Because of the rain yesterday, it's a muddy mess out here, so it's at least gonna have to wait till Monday. But if it dries out a little bit tomorrow, I'll see if I can fire up the machine and move a little bit of dirt. What do you think of our sand mound? I'm excited because now we can have a regular toilet and not a porta pot, which I have no problems with a porta pot other than the fact that we pay $100 a month to maintain it, which is just extremely reasonable considering that they clean it once every two weeks and we're really not using it that much, but I'm excited for a toilet. Basically what she's saying is we traded our $100 a month porta pot rental for a $20,000 septic system. Overall, it was a real blessing that the septic failed the first time. At the time, that felt like a real bummer because it, it was just kind of a punch in the gut. But if that septic would have passed where it was, it would have been literally right outside our house, right off the side of the house. So in hindsight, I think it was actually quite a good thing that we failed for the first time. The giant rock is sitting somewhere nearby right now, actually. It's buried at this point. I think it's buried under this giant pile of dirt. So many rocks. But, uh, yeah, I think it was actually a good thing in the grand scheme of things because Sand Mound is way over there in the woods. It's hidden uh, and it's downhill too. So honestly, the, the house is way even higher than the Sand Mound is right now. And so we really can't see it. It doesn't look like any elevated feature of terrain or anything like that. The test pit that we failed at was actually pretty much right next to where the septic tank hole is. And you can see some of the other rock that came out of this. There's some big rocks. That guy is probably, I don't know, four foot in diameter. And in comparison, here's where the sand mount would have been, and that's actually where it ended up, way down there. So not a bad trade, if you ask me. Today is backfill day. It is a very brisk morning. It was down to about 26 last night, got a good frost. But I'm starting by just taking the stone that was dug out of the trenches for these lateral pipes, putting it back in over top of the pipes. I hear Jason coming up the driveway right now, and today he's gonna be moving some dirt. Of course, I gotta go to work, so I won't be here for most of the day, but I figured I'd come early, help him out for just a little bit, and then head out. Jason's here, backfill has begun. He's grabbing screenings from the pile over there to put around the pipe. This is a 12 foot roll, so it's not quite long enough to cover the whole bed. So I think I'm gonna have to go sideways with it. Well, I finished all the fabric. Unfortunately, now I have to go to work, so Jason's gonna be working by himself for the rest of the day. But he's making good progress on his machine, so I've just gotta let him do his thing, and hopefully when I come back, 
will be pretty much all backfilled and covered up. One of the crappy things about this area is how many rocks there are. and We're trying to figure out a good way to get rid of all this crappy rocky soil. So Jason's just kind of putting it beneath the berm to help lessen out that slope down there. That's really the only use for it, unfortunately. All right, it's been a few weeks since all the main work on the septic got done and there's been these last lingering couple piles of dirt that still have yet to be moved. The septic guy asked if I wanted him to do it for another day worth of work, which was $1,000. Probably should have said yes, but I said no, I'll do it myself with my skid steer. The problem with that is my skid steer is a wheeled machine, which makes it much more difficult to push into dirt piles when it's wet outside. And we're now approaching winter. We're basically, I guess we're officially in winter now. Today's New Year's Eve, by the way. And it is too wet all the time to really be using a wheeled machine. I spent at least a couple hours now cleaning up half this pile. It used to come out past this, this is a tree stump right here. But it came out to like here and I spent probably two hours just digging into that with my smooth bucket, trying to get through it. If it were regular dirt, this would be no problem. But our dirt is literally like 60 to 70% straight up rock. I mean, look at this guy here. It's probably like an 80 pound rock right there. And the second that my smooth bucket hits one of those things in the pile, I basically come to a dead halt. So I have to really work the bucket in the pile and it's a definite struggle. All I'm really doing with these dirt and rocks is spreading it alongside the hill here, just sort of building out the slope. It's just an easy place to go with it. You can sort of see the edge of where I stopped filling right there. And my idea here is basically just to bury this in screen dirt. I'm just gonna get the same stuff that we got for the septic system. It's two inch minus. It's technically fill dirt, but honestly, it looked good enough to me to be topsoil. Topsoil is like $300 a load compared to the two inch minus, which is like a little under 200. So not worth it to me to get the actual topsoil. And I'm just gonna have a few loads dumped right on this rock and I'm just gonna push it right over so that it becomes like a, just a nice smooth dirt pile and I don't have to worry about any more rock. So I'll keep pressing on here. I have what's left of that pile and then the whole of this pile here, which is about the same size as the first one when it started. I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I traded my smooth bucket off for my rock grapple. This is the only implement I have that actually has teeth on the front of it. So hopefully it will let me dig into the pile a little bit easier. Reporting live from the top of the very last dirt pile I got to move. This one's probably about two dump truck loads worth of soil. Mostly rock actually, not really much soil at all. But it's piled up next to this beautiful tree here and I don't want it sitting up against the tree any longer. So I got the skid steer warming up and we're going to move this all today, hopefully. Where am I going to move it to? Good question because it is not a really small pile of dirt, but luckily I think I got kind of a spot for it. If you look way down at the bottom there, there's a puddle and that is collecting water from everything that runs down this hill basically. So I'm gonna to try to build that area up a little bit so to hopefully divert that water to the left. And then I'll cover it all up with my two inch minus imported soil and just smooth it all over so it can grow grass. Well, that was a decently fruitful day. Got most of the pile moved. Just got a little bit of cleanup to do around the edges. You can see that dark spot down there. I moved most of it there. And then I started filling around this back corner here behind the mound. It's kind of steep there, so I was trying to feather that slope out a little bit more. Big thanks to Elena's dad, Mark, who came in from out of town yesterday. He's helping me do all this raking, seeding, and strawing on the mound. This is the last step before we get our last formal inspection. There's still some final grading to do and some seeding, some strawing, but I'm cutting it here. The septic system is done in my book. This is the longest YouTube video we've ever made. So thanks if you stuck it through all the way. Hope you learned a couple things about sand mound septic systems because I sure did putting this in. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.